So we had the Supercomputing Conference here in Denver, and who are you? My name is Heidi Poxen, and I'm a member of the Programming Environments Group at Cray. And right here, you're showing a beautiful new uh, arm system, right? Yes. So we're introducing our new support for the ARM, uh, the Cavium TX2 processor on our XC line. And uh, we're talking a little bit about the software stack that we have available. So if you have any questions specific to it. So uh, it's got a whole bunch of uh, Cavium Thunder X2. This is eight. What about yeah, so basically what we have is we have dual socket nodes. So we have two, two sockets per node, and there's four nodes on a blade. And then they're connected to our custom Aries interconnect. And they plug into our current Cray XC50 system. So this is uh, your fast networking system? Yeah, Very fast. Is, yeah, this is our Aries interconnect, and that's used today on Intel processor XC50s and now introduced with the Cavium TX2. And uh, what does a node mean? A node? Because it's like nodes. Um, so it, it's, there's a lot of talk about nodes in the servers and the supercomputers, right? Yeah, so basically a node is it's two CPUs on a node, and the node is, the, uh, is a grouping. It's typically running an instance of Linux or an instance of the operating system. It has a number of cores, and uh, you typically run either in HPC, you run MPI or OpenMP jobs within a node, and you run MPI jobs across nodes. So uh, you're able to have two, two uh, CPUs and one node. Right. So you run one Linux with two CPUs. Right. They have each of them have uh, 48 or how many cores? Yeah, it depends on the configuration. You can have cores. Some of our processors we support are 32 cores. Some are 48. It depends. And uh, this is ARM. This is a big deal, right? It's something different. It's not Intel. So well, it's not the x86. What do you do to make it work? So it's not the x86 ISA. It's a different ISA. It's actually the ARM V8 ISA. What is uh, what ARM refers to as Neon. And what we've done is we've built a software stack to support the, the processor. So we have a custom Cray compiler that is designed to work on ARM. We have a set of scientific libraries like Laws and Scala Pack, FFTW that are designed to work on ARM. And we have performance profiling tools and we have some debug support tools as well. So it sounds like a whole bunch of software. Cray is not just doing hardware, right? Right. And yeah. one of the things that we do is a lot of people sell commodity hardware these days. And so one thing that's very important to Cray is how to extract the most performance from the system and allow users to scale to higher size jobs than anywhere else. Uh, to higher size jobs. So yes, so performance at scale is very important to us. So we can, for example, our profiling tools and our MPI implementation can run at very high um, job sizes, so over 200,000 MPI ranks, for example. Uh, so we want to be able to run at scale, and we want to be able to extract the most performance for the user application. So maybe if you can stand just on the other side here. Uh, this this looks beautiful and awesome. But how soon is it shipping? So the current plan is to make this available in spring of 2018. But if you go host, spring. Is yeah. that the uh, right now the plan is April of 2018. April 2018. Uh, who's going to be a customer for this? Anybody who might be planning to make giant supercomputer, you can consider this? Well, I, I'm not the right person to ask about a giant supercomputer, I don't actually know that, but I do know that um, we did have a some information from Simon McIntosh, McIntosh Smith, um, who's done some work on our, our early access. And, uh, and uh, they want to launch 160 nodes or something like that. Uh, I mean, uh, or maybe more, so, but uh, something significant. It's not that they're testing right now, right? Right, right. He's here right now, actually. <laughs> so they want to do something big. So, uh, yes. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll jump over to, yeah. Uh, yeah. to check what they're doing. Yeah, it would be better to talk direct, directly to Simon. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So, uh, so hi. So who are you? Hello. Uh, so I'm Simon McIntosh Smith. I'm the PI of the Isambard project, which is the first production ARM-based supercomputer. Uh, Isambard. What, is, what does that name come from? Where do you get the idea? Uh, so there's a, a famous uh, Victorian engineer in the UK, a guy called Isambard Kingdom Brunel. He's a fa fascinating person. Um, you should look him up. Uh, and in the 1800s, he designed lots of fantastic technology in the UK. He designed and built um, the Paddington train station, the whole rail network in the south of the UK. He was designing bridges, tunnels, uh, ships. So he was uh, he was the innovator of his age. So like this, a Da Vinci type. 
da, uh, very much a Da Vinci kind of guy, yeah. So we, we've named this system in honor of him. And uh, uh, is there some stuff to, on this wall? Uh, where does it say stuff? Uh, there's a slide uh, going around. So uh, you're, you're working uh, with Craig, right? uh, getting the supercomputer to work. Uh, you're at the Bristol University, right? Yep, I'm, I'm at Bristol University. Um, the Isambard Project is a collaboration of four universities. It's uh, Bristol, Bath, Exeter and Cardiff. Those are four universities in the south of the UK. They're all quite close. All connected by the railways that uh, Isambard built. So that's uh, one of the other nice connections. And we're also partnering up with the UK Met Office. So this is uh, the organization that does the weather forecasting for the UK. And they have a big supercomputer and they have a, a nice big data center. And they've uh, actually offered to host the Isambard machine for us. And then they're partnering on the project and they're actually trying the machine themselves as well. So if this works out, the weather uh, reports are going to be more accurate? <laughs> um, actually, I think what we're, what we're looking at is, could we use ARM-based supercomputers for running real uh, weather forecasting and do it at uh, a rate that we've never seen before? So it's really looking at whether this might offer advantages in terms of performance, whether it's uh, performance per dollar, those sorts of things. That's what we're, we're really looking at, yeah. And uh, you had a speaker who was speaking at the Iron Music meeting. And you said you've been looking for it for two years. Why is that? That's right. So we, we started the Isabard project uh, about two years ago. So I go back to the, the Mont Blanc project, which is a European project, one of the early ones exploring whether ARM was a, a viable option for high performance computing. And during the Mont Blanc project, it looked like, yes, uh, this was possible. Uh, but that was very much kind of a, a prototype kind of um, situation. So we thought what we really want to do is build a real production machine to see if that works and find out what any of the issues are. So we had that idea about two years ago, and it's taken two years of working with Cray, working with Cavium, uh, uh, sorting out all the funding to actually make this possible. Working with ARM? Working with ARM as well. ARM have been super helpful, uh, helping make a lot of this happen. They're also part of the project. Um, they've even given us some funding to help do some of the software side of the work that's required. So Ar ARM's been a brilliant partner in the project as well. How about working with Lunaro? Um, I think we're not working directly with them, but I think we're benefiting from a lot of the work they've done. So a lot of the software stack we're using is stuff that those guys have already done, and, and so lots of things are just working. Um, so that's quite nice, and, and that might be their, their ambition is their stuff is just under the hood. Uh, you don't even need to know it's there, it just, it just works. And that, that's been our experience so far. So uh, you had early access to this gray stuff, but you have some beautiful ones like this already? No, we don't have any of these. So this will be what we have for real with our production machine, which we'll get in about May next year. Um, but so far we've just had early access nodes, they're basically white boxes. Um, but the ones we've got have come from, from Cray, so we have the Cray software stack on those white boxes as well as all of the open source software. So we have three different compilers we can use, which is really useful. Um, uh, but we're mostly focusing on the sort of node level work because of that. So uh, going multi-node is not so interesting just for white boxes because you've just got 10 gig Ethernet. When we, get the, when we get a whole bunch of these, we're going to have um, 160 nodes, four nodes in here, so we'll have 40 of these. Uh, it's basically a whole cabinet, so I don't know if you can see the cabinet. Just like, like this? We'll Should we just a... walk around just a little bit? So, you're going to have a nice big, uh, big one like this, kind yeah. of? So it's, a, it's a whole one of these. So, Do you have the key? Uh, I don't know. Can we open it? or? Hey. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. you'll have something we'll beautiful like have, that? It's going to be a, very much like that. So it'll be a, a, whole, a whole one of these. It'll be a 40 blades. Every blade has four nodes, about 160 nodes. So that will be that will be Isambard. So we'll have about 10,000 cores, 10,000 Thunder X cores in, in that one box. So that's considered a pretty cool supercomputer, or what do you think? That, that would be a very cool supercomputer. Very cool. 10,000 cores was a very deliberate size because for the for the UK National Supercomputer Archer, most of the jobs we run are up to 10,000 cores. So um, by having 10,000 cores, we can do some really nice comparisons with the Archer National Supercomputer. Uh, Archer National Supercomputer, that's one of the good ones in the UK? Or what is that one? Yeah, in the UK, that's the main uh, science machine that we use for all of our um, 
chemistry simulations, weather simulations, things like that. So it's a 118,000 core uh, X86, uh, Cray XC30 actually, that's in Edinburgh. And that's the, the, the main machine that we use in the UK when we're, when we're doing our science. So how is that going to compare with one of those? So this, performance? This, this will be like a small, a small chunk of, of Archer. But like I say, um, the way we use Archer, uh, we don't re really have people use the whole machine at one time. They just use up to 10,000 cores of it. So what we'll have for Isabard is something that would let us uh, replicate that situation where somebody might have up to 10,000 cores of Archer. They could have up to 10,000 cores of Isambard and see how that compares to Archer. Uh, so uh, are you a bunch of, do you have a bunch of students working with you? And uh, like, uh, are they like really happy to work on this kind of stuff? Are they like computer science students? Or? Yeah, sure. So I, I have a, a whole team of guys from PhD students to postdocs working on this, but, but the GW4 project actually has people across the whole four universities. So we have researchers, we have professional software developers, um, we have sysadmins all working to make this uh, a reality. Uh, so let's um, just one, one more second over here. Sure. So uh, what do you, could you, would you consider it successful what you've been doing thus far and how much more is there to be done? Sure. Um, when, we, when we dreamt up the project two years ago, it was um, at the time a little bit crazy and probably quite risky because there was nothing anywhere near this yet. But it felt like the trajectory was going in the right direction and that's why it felt like a risk but a worthwhile risk. Um, and where we got to now, as soon as we started seeing what uh, Thunder X2 should be like, the spec sounded good, that was building our confidence. And then when we started to get some remote access uh, back in the summer, just around sort of ISC time, we started to get some very early numbers on some remote hardware, and that started to look good. At that point, we started to get excited. And then uh, a few weeks ago, we got our early access node, so this is the first hardware we've had in-house, and that's worked really, really well. So we, we've actually done almost all the early evaluation we want to in just two weeks, which is fantastic. So um, things are looking really good. We're in pretty good shape when we get the real machine. Our, our goal is, our ambition is to try and go into a production live service as soon as we can over the summer and just open the machine up for scientists to run on it and just get science done. Um, and so far that's looking very, very promising. You had a hackathon already? We've had our first hackathon already. Which on was this really kind of uh, early release hardware, the Cray. Yeah. Yep, so we had, with our eight early access nodes. They all signed NDAs or, because it's new, this, it's this very was, new. This was all under NDA because it hadn't been launched. The next one we do, now it's all public, won't need to be under NDA, but the last one was all under NDA. And we've been sat on the numbers. Uh, actually, we were still tweaking the numbers up to like Sunday. Um, uh, but we are so excited to be able to tell people at last what what's happening, and it's looking it's looking very promising. So how do the numbers look like? Uh, basically, it's better than the Intel stuff, or what? How do the um, numbers look like? What do they say? The, the Thunder X2 processors have got more memory channels than most of the other processors shipping today. So for codes that are very memory bandwidth bound, um, you get really good performance, and it beats the best from from everyone else at the moment, which is really cool. Um, uh, if you have more compute bound codes, then then it's a much closer run thing because the current ARM processors only have 128-bit wide vectors, whereas um, other CPUs that are shipping have 256-bit or 512-bit wide vectors. So there are some codes that really do benefit from that. So there are some cases where we wouldn't expect to win. But for anything that's primarily memory bandwidth band, which is many of our real scientific codes, um, these things are going to be the ones we'll expect to have the greatest performance, which is great. So that's great for... UK arm, right? Even though now it's Japanese owned, but uh, yep. uh, it's great for Europe to have something uh, exciting in the, I mean, uh, and all these uh, students uh, coming out of this project and uh, supercomputers are, the, the market is, is exploding also, right? And yeah. it's all related with servers too. Yeah. And eventually with phones. It feels like a very interesting time and I think um, it's great to have this diversity. Hopefully that should be good for the, for the health and the vibrancy of the whole ecosystem, that it should be, um, some competition is always great, right? So everyone generally responds well to competition. Everyone ups their game. Uh, the rate of innovation increases. Um, the cost effectiveness improves. So this is, it's really great to see this happening. I'm, I'm really thrilled. And you were talking about 10,000 cores, right? 10,000 10, cores, But yeah. uh, would it be cool if uh, some of your team uh, and maybe somebody else and says, OK, let's just build something to be the Chinese and be number one on the, and it <laughs> yeah. should be arm powered. Does that make any sense? Uh, at least one of the Chinese 
exascale machines has already been announced as being ARM based. So some of the some of the Chinese exascale machines will be ARM based. The Japanese uh, Riken exascale machine Fujitsu is is ARM based. Um, though I'm sure there will be ARM based big machines in the US um, and clearly in, in Europe we're very interested in this as well. So I think ARM will show up all over the world, uh, uh, including China. And all these people are want to know your numbers and want to hear what you've been doing and they're yep. all talking with you right now. You're very busy at this conference, right? <laughs> yeah, we're running yeah. around like a mad thing. It's been great. We've kind of been mobbed by people with interest. Um, that's why it's great that the numbers are all online. If you go to the goingarm.com website, which was for the user uh, group yesterday, goingarm.com, um, it has all the talks from yesterday and the slides for my talk. If you look for my name, Simon McIntosh Smith, we've got early results for Isambard. The PDF is right there. You can download it. It has all the numbers. It has all the specs of the benchmarks, the specs of the hardware we were using. So we're public at last. And I have a great. video of your the whole speech. You, you did that. Okay, yeah. good. Good. You have that too. Cool. Thanks, Ari. Good.